All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to uh, Live Scribbles with Jonathan. Uh, you can check out my website, my work at jonathanrecker.com. And uh, today's Monday, Monday something, the 27th. <laughs> and we're going to be doing something a little different here. You guys probably see me posting it all weekend or whatever. Um, one of the things I've been trying to do is find ways to get a little bit more, um, how you say, work done. And uh, I came across a really cool blog, uh, my pal Tyler James of Comics Tribe, if you guys have uh, heard of that website, if not, just check out comicstribe.com, C-O-M-I-X, tribe.com. And uh, he, uh, Tyler there, he sent me this link, and this cat on there was talking about getting up like crazy early, and like, kind of going to bed like when you were a kid in a way. So uh, the routine, for me anyway, uh, this is day two, is uh, 4 a.m. to 9 p.m. And I know it sounds really weird, but uh, once you get through that initial fog of waking up, uh, it's actually really good. Uh, yesterday was the first day of doing it, and I, you know, I got through a comic page before around noon, and that gave me the rest of the day to just kind of do whatever you want. And I think that's the whole point. If you're working like a full-time job, or if you're working at all, it's just trying to find a w little ways to like. Um, Find out what works best for you, especially if you have a full-time job. That way, uh, in the in the morning, you can do uh, your comic work or personal work that you want to do. Then you can go to work. Then you come home, and you've got three to four, maybe five hours to do whatever you want to do. And uh, I don't know. It's li it's a liberating feeling knowing that you're putting in the work right up front. You're at your most creative peak, usually when people wake up. And then you go to work, do what you got to do there. And then when you come home... The rest of the day is yours to do whatever you like. And it's it's been a little while since I felt that. And even right now, you know, I've got a lot of work on my shoulders and stuff, but it feels good. <laughs> and I just wanted to get that out at the beginning. I didn't want to spend the entire, you know, stream talking about that. I just wanted to get that out at the beginning uh, for those of you that are going to watch a recorded version. Just so you guys could be interested in it, maybe, and try it out if you're looking for something like that to fix it. Oh, excuse me. Hey, good morning, Rampa. Wow. I honestly thought this chat would be totally <laughs> empty this morning, um, but it looks like we've got a few people in here. I just want to say, because I know we're going to have a whole different crowd, I'll talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing uh, with the new stream here, uh, but while I'm talking, uh, really quickly what I'm going to be doing, it's probably going to be kind of boring for you guys, uh, hopefully it'll go pretty quick. I'm just using Manga Studio 4 EX here, and I'm going to be adding, uh, let me see if I can just turn these off here so you can see. Uh, right here, I'm adding my perspective rulers in, and if you guys are, aren't too familiar with that, you'll see what they are. Really amazing tool. It just takes a little bit of time in the beginning setting it up, so that's what I'm, I'm going to be doing while I'm talking there. But uh, it does look like we have a few viewers in here um, that aren't part of the, or you're in the chat, I guess. Um, if you guys did have a comment or a question, the show's for you guys. So all you need to do is make an account so you can post it in the chat box, and uh, that way I can get to it. And, um, you know. Don't feel ashamed about uh, asking any questions. Uh, panel two. Again, this shows for you guys, so um, anything I can do to help you guys out, uh, just let me know. And uh, kind of going back to what uh, I was talking about a little earlier, uh, what I plan on doing is a little extra motivation <laughs> to roll out of bed. Is uh, every Monday to Friday, at least now, I'm going, we're going full bore with this stuff. Every Monday to Friday, uh, this exact time, for an hour, I'll be doing a live stream. And then on Thursday nights, hopefully, I'm going to try it this week as well, still do the hour stream, but I don't know what I'll be doing, and then I might be still working on this kind of stuff. Or, uh, you know, get into the old crazy stuff. i got some commissions I have to do, so I was thinking maybe picking up a tripod or something. And we could record uh, some, like, traditional work. thought that'd be kind of fun. Oops, uh... Uh, what I'm doing here is, because uh, I do get confused sometimes with all this stuff and all these layers turning on and off, I just name them P1, P2, that kind of stuff, um, for panels. That way, um, you know, like I can turn that perspective grid off, I don't need it. Uh, so the first one here, let me see, this right here, this shot, it's a little crazy, it's a, it's a bird's eye view. And it's going to be a three point perspective. A quick trick, uh, if you're, if you're kind of confused yourself as to what how many points a perspective should be, uh, let's, ju let's just say, this is one thing I remember I used to do to try to understand getting some perspective down. And I still do it today, and I don't think there's any shame in it. Pick your favorite comic book, especially one that kind of pushes uh, perspective a little bit if you can. And just look at panels in there and try to copy those shots. Like, try to redraw the, that perspective. 
one of the cool things that it lets you do is it um, it shows you right away what's going on and just kind of like how you would do with thumbnail just grab a little piece of paper and a pencil and just sketch it you know draw it and uh, really loosely and the idea is like let's say for this example here this panel here where the, we got this character it might be a little hard to see on the stream uh, but we got our, our, the superhero walking down the hallway into this uh, door or into this room with the door that's been open a little bit and what I would do is if I draw the scene this and I don't know quite right how the perspective is I would just draw these lines and sketch the biggest and longest line so here we got the wall so I'd sketch that up this wall sketch that up eventually these are going to either reach a point or they'll start to merge together and you'll start to see it right away what exactly is going on there um, so the first thing I do because this is a little bit weird of a panel uh, if you click this tool here uh, what's it called object selector um, and just right click turn this off fix eye level to horizontal we don't want that we're gonna have to rotate this guy so now that's done usually what I do because uh, I do have some trouble moving this thing around A and S rotate it and it's gonna take off like that um, I'm just looking to rotate it so that our horizontal is literally up and down that way I can get um, oh, sorry if you click the object selector you can also move your guides around as well so it's gonna be really cool once we start moving things around uh, so let me just zoom out here get this all straightened up and I think that snapped on there Sometimes these things can be a little finicky. There we go, I got you. Um, it's a little harder to see, so what I do is I'll just kind of like throw these way out here. These, uh, what I'm looking at right here are the perspectives, the vanishing points. And then I can just kind of move it around and see what's going on. Have that object selected. Sometimes this thing can be a little bit of pain in the ass. I'm not gonna lie to you, but uh, once you get through the BS, uh, it's I don't know. It's invaluable. Okay, so we've got our up and down, uh, left and right are pretty much good to go. Let me just bring this guy back into the screen here. This is where our one point perspective is going going to be. I'm just going to make sure that the perspective is right here. This one's an easy one to check out uh, because you can see where the actual like other lines are going there. So you've got these guys coming up and down, uh, and that's all working there as well. Uh, I'm going to put that on the actual pers vanishing point there. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Okay, and we'll probably get to that one in a little bit here. Okay, so get to th this one's a much simpler one, so we'll turn that perspective off. Uh, this third one here, this is just one point perspective here. I promise we'll get to some drawing today. <laughs> uh, layer. Oops, sorry. So there, uh, ruler, that's what I was looking at. Ruler, one point perspective, and we're just going to move it. Uh, another trick too, for some of you that might be uh, still getting used to working in perspective, uh, always remember that your perspective is actually going to lead the eye, right? Like when you're doing comics, the whole point is to try to tell as many cool stories as you can, and as clear as you can, at the best you can. If you nail all three, then you're, you know, you're on your way. Uh, most chance, more, or most times, you probably won't nail it all the time, but that's okay. Practice will get you there. And in this case, for clarity, especially one-point perspective, 
all the lines are bringing it to a point. So, like, we got our character coming in, and he's. I even have him looking down to the vanishing point, but it's going. When all those lines are said and done, when they're in there, it's going to really help sell uh, where the viewer should look. Again, a lot of one point perspective. Um, and this is actually a critical thing you could do when you're looking at your work. Uh, it's something that I'm trying to fix. Actually, in this first panel here, the initial thumbnail that I had sent for approval, he was walking down the hallway just like this, except the camera was um, more like either panel two or panel three. And uh, when I went over to do the, the tight pencil or the rough, I'll call it tight pencils. It's just tightening up these thumbnails. Uh, I had to change this panel to be like a bird's eye view just so it's something different as I look at this There's a lot of it. It's all the exact same shot It's all like as if it was on a camera and some camera was just following this guy around uh, So in hindsight um, It's something that I'm aware that I'm doing and now that I'm aware of it. I have to fix it and by fixing it. It's as easy as uh, just literally changing your angles up See, like here, I'm doing one-point perspective, but all I did was tilt the camera. That's great. You know, it gives it something else besides just straight lines all the time. But uh, it doesn't fix the problem of everything's just looking the same. Uh, so, again, just be critical of your work so you can see the stuff. And, and the more you find this kind of stuff, uh, the easier it'll be to fix. You'll be aware of it, right? Um, i trying to figure this out. The only perspective I think I got going on in here is just this door yeah okay so that one's actually whoops I gotta rotate this guy too so A and S will rotate it uh, you just gotta make sure you disable that uh, right click on any of the vanishing points and fix eye level to horizontal let's get rid of that and it's gonna take off there you go I'll just move it back and the reason you're rotating it I don't know if you guys can even see it but this green is called your plumb line that's, uh, if you could imagine you were standing in that environment with a weight tied to a piece of string and you were to hold your arm straight out, it would, that string would pull straight down. It would pull straight down because of gravity. So that's what, you're, that's what some people call the plumb line. Uh, that's where all your up and down lines would be. Um, so in this case, we got kind of like a dynamic shot. The lines aren't straight up and down. They're kind of on a tilt. So by tilting that, um, all of our straight lines that we draw, uh, they'll be on that tilt as well. I'm just trying to make sure that's all good. Okay, cool. And we got one last panel here. And again, it's uh, apparently my favorite perspective, <laughs> one point perspective. Um, especially in scenes like this, this is actually one thing that I want to fix um, in future issues as well, or just in future work, is, uh, you know, I have these simple rooms. And granted, these rooms are drawn while... Um, the scenes at night so the only real there's a couple light sources that you have to play with like a TV can be the only thing on you don't need to have an entire lit room but uh, I want to have a little bit more detail in my backgrounds these are literally just rectangles it, it does exactly what I need it to do so I'm not too concerned um, but again just trying to nitpick on your own work every now and then at least for me feels like uh, you know somebody else is watching out over my stuff so alright so we got the last perspective in there and again, what's really cool with the one point perspective is it's very quick and it's very easy. You just miss out on some of the cool dynamic shots. And again, like even like the character shots, a little bit boring, a little bit boring. All right, so uh, just real quick before we get into some more drawing here, just want to let you guys know, it looks like we got even more viewers in the room here. Um, if you guys want to ask a question, don't be shy. All you got to do is make an account on uh, live stream. And then just, if you wouldn't mind, just post it in all capitals, your question. That way I can see it. I know it's so early in the morning right now that the chat isn't really active, which I get. That's cool. But um, just for future reference, if you guys had a little question, don't feel, you know, shame or anything like that. If you got a question, chances are somebody else has a similar question. So you'll be helping them out as well. Okay, so let's get to it. Um, which one should we draw? Which panel? Ah, first panel of the day. Let's go simple. We'll just go with the second one. And uh, one thing I wanted to talk a little bit about today was uh, we're at panel two. Let's just get a new layer going here. I'm just going to have to clean this up a little bit, just the face. But uh, one thing I wanted to definitely talk about 
was uh, one of the deadline things that I have going on right now for the standard. And, uh, you know, workload and kind of going into the whole waking up early stuff. All that cool thing. All that cool thing. <laughs> oh, man, language is everywhere right now. Is uh, I kind of got off track, like usual, with my deadlines. And, oops, i got to turn that layer off. There we go. And I was trying to find out ways that I could try to get back on track. And uh, for some reason, something clicked. And this is this is going to sound totally weird. Maybe you guys are, have experienced it as well. I, I'm not sure. But it was um, working out of order. And uh, what I mean by that is I'm in the last, I'm in the home stretch here, this last issue. I've got this page and I think three other pages in this, this uh, issue four of the standard is done. So it's in the home stretch, feels comfortable. At this point, you know, you feel a little confident. You got all the issue behind you and stuff like that. Things are happening. Things are working out. That's great. But this panel or this page and another page, there's a lot of little panels on it and a lot of perspective work. It's a lot of work. So what I was trying to do is just, what if I tack all the easiest panels first? I'm sorry. Uh, easiest pages first. Uh, one of them is like a splash page, you know, just one big image. Uh, another one was uh, the same kind of object moving around, so I could just draw it once or twice and move it around and rotate it. Um, and, uh, you know, just to help build momentum, get that fire going. And I just wanted to bring that up to you guys, your attention anyway. I don't know if you guys think about this or not, like when you're working on your own projects or maybe somebody else's. Nothing that I know of in every project I've ever worked on, nobody's really said, no, you can't work out of, you can't work out of order. You have to do page one, page two, page three. You can't go page one, page 20, page three. You got to be careful because sometimes there's some continuity or, you know, you're, depending on how long it takes you to draw a comic, sometimes your quality jumps, you know, so you got to be careful of it, but Little things you can do there to help if you're feeling like burnt out or exhausted a little bit or just working on the same stuff all the time. I'm a big fan of just trying to figure things out so you can still keep making making quality content, at least that you can make the best of, right? Uh, the idea is to continually work. I was listening to some podcasts to try to get some like productivity tips. I guess you could get. I guess you could say. I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting like really into that stuff. Like the whole, what else can you do in your life uh, that you're not doing? And it's not necessarily adding more work. It's it's refining and clarifying your workflow, um, and finding little things that other people find. Uh, that other people find motivating and all kinds of stuff like that so that you can actually get more work done and all that stuff. I don't know, it's like a field I'm really getting really interested in. And it kind of ties into the whole waking up early stuff. Because, like, I'll be honest with you guys, you know, and this isn't a sympathy thing or a, you know, I've been made fun of for it before. I've gotten over it. I don't care. It's a, it's one of the things I've given up in order to do this kind of stuff. And I know there's lots of other comics creators and artists that haven't given this up. And that's great. Just do what's good for you. But like social life <laughs> basically is non-existent. Um, a lot of what I do is just work. And, and I'm okay with that. I mean, th those are choices that I've made. Just, you know, just trying to figure things out. Like, how do I get better? How do I get where I want to go? And unfortunately, one of the things you got to give up, or at least I gave up, to a degree, is uh, just hanging out with friends and stuff like that. I'd start to get like this really weird thing happening where I would get really upset and angry at myself if, if after a while I wasn't drawing or I wasn't making stuff, you know? Uh, like, let's say I'd be over at a friend's house playing, I don't know... Um, Smash Brothers, we'll say, for example. And so I'm playing that. It's great. Having a great time. And then a few hours in, like if I was just there doing nothing, just playing that, one day of that would be enough for me. But then after a while, it would just seem like I could be, you know, drawing. And it gets into the whole stuff again, uh, like that Arnold Schwarzenegger quote <laughs> that I have on my Facebook and stuff where it's like when you're out there horsing around, just remember that somebody out there is getting smarter, getting faster, basically getting to their goals and their dreams. Um, 
So it's a motivational thing as well, kind of, you know, putting a little fear into you, saying like, if you want it, just be careful. Don't don't spend too much of your time horsing around. You got to put in the time. Um, because if you're not and somebody else is, those opportunities that you may have might be given to somebody else. And uh, I know there's a lot of fear mongering that that can bring on. Like you start thinking, and I mean, honestly, I got that way too a little bit where it was just thinking like that. It's poison. It can be very poisonous. All you do is think about, <laughs> oh God, got to work, got to work. That's all you can do is work. And you'll get burnt out. Um, I know I have, that's for sure. All right, so tighten it up a little bit more. Got all the information I need on there. Um, I don't want to make him looking too serious here. So he's going to bring his eyebrows up a little bit. All right, so we got that. Uh, let's see if I can turn it blue if it starts to lose a little bit. Yeah, all right, let's just lower the opacity a little bit more. Cool. So we're going to make a new layer above that. And uh, let's get to work. Hey, Kyler Tripp. Um, Kyler Tripp asks, uh, Hey, John, what artists have inspired you lately? Uh, lately, I would say the biggest artist that I could immediately pop to that uh just trying to think ryan oatley he does uh invincible god man the anatomy that he's doing i don't know it reminds me reminds me of back in the day i used to go to a conceptart.org i think it is and I, I i don't go there as much anymore but uh recently i started going on there but there's another guy that used to draw kind of like this and i don't know if you guys know this guy if or if not that's cool uh, his name was alan two T E W, and the way these guys could draw anatomy was just oh my goodness it was it was refreshing. And uh, sorry, just let me turn this down a little bit. I just don't want it to uh, get in the way here of what I'm drawing here. If I can't see what I'm drawing, um, but anyway, so his anatomy and stuff it's just again it's refreshing to see and the energy that that guy gets. Man. Um, other than that. Let's think. I want to think of some new guys. Some guys that aren't necessarily like working for the big companies. Um, Joe Mulvey, actually, if you guys have read Scam from Comics Tribe. Oh, man. I, I was able to meet that guy in New York last year for the comic book convention. I was fortunate enough to be in the same booth with him, John Lees, Tyler James. Uh, a lot of guys that were working on Comics Tribe books. I don't know, the energy, like, I don't know, like, if you've, if you've ever had the chance to experience a comic book convention where you're at the booth, and it was a positive one, I think we've all had, uh, you know, experiences, whether it's at a convention or otherwise, where, hey, it's me, <laughs> come buy my stuff, and, like, you're not really getting attention, and nobody really likes your stuff, that's gonna happen, but um, when you are fortunate enough to have the opposite happen, where you go in there, and it's kind of successful, man, that like kind of stuff is just energizing as hell. It's what makes you want to keep doing what you're doing. You know, peer support, just people enjoying your work. It's awesome stuff. Uh, what other artists? Uh, like I got my big guys that I always look at. Joe Matarera, um, Greg Capullo, Eduardo Rizzo from 100 Bullets. That's like one of his things I think a lot of people know him from. Uh, who else we got? So many cool artists. I, I mean, even like guys like Frank Frazetta are awesome. Akira Toriyama, Dragon Ball, Chrono Trigger, that kind of art style. A lot of uh, video game artists as well. I dig. Um, and unfortunately, I don't know as many of their name because it's always so it's always so hidden. Trying to find these guys and girls. Um, just take a look back there. I just recently got into like a lot of manga, so uh, I don't know again these guys' names. In Japanese is really hard for me, but Vagabond is an awesome comic. Um, I literally just got into Naruto as well, and that's actually pretty good. It's, uh, it's fun, it's simple. If you guys have ever read Gon, G-O-N, it's about like a, a dinosaur that lived through the priest, or f all the dinosaurs got wiped out and there's only one left, and there's literally zero dialogue in these comics, but the art is amazing. Frank Miller, awesome stuff. Berserk, been reading that, that's really good. And uh, real quick, last one, uh, Adam Warren, I don't know if you guys are into his stuff at all. He's an American heavily influenced manga style a lot of like speed lines in his work <laughs> and he always draws he's doing one right now called empowered and the girl it's like a lot of like bondage kind of stuff it is draw his girls are always drawn a certain way but uh, it's definitely a unique style but really like his his work as well
Let's just get this mouth going here. Alright. Usually start off with this character with like his big chin. Make sure he's got the butt chin going on. And what's really cool at this point too, um, you got it empowered. Yep. Thanks, Grandpa. Um, the standard here, you're supposed to be old. And for some reason, like as, as much as I try to, I just can't not draw him with muscle. And it looks really weird. Like, look at this guy. This guy's ripped. This guy's ripped than most guys at, like, their peak. And uh, he's still old. But, like, I, I, I don't know. I, I like him to have that stoic, heroic look, even if he's an old man. Like, somehow he's still invested the time into his body, you know? Um, but his face is where I get to play around a little bit. I get to get those really cool wrinkles. So we'll get into that in a second here. Uh, I'm just going to put the rest of his head here. This usually causes a little bit of trouble. So like empty looking at the top. Uh, let's flip it and see what it's looking. Might be a little big. That's okay. We'll leave it for now. It's digital, right? We can always go in there and change it anytime. Freedom. Okay, so I'll show you guys another trick here. Um, if you guys ever look at somebody like Brian Hitch, he does. He did the Ultimates. Um, a lot of cool stuff. I don't know if he's working for DC right now. I'm pretty sure Marvel still got him, but. He would do these really cool things to, like, costumes. I don't know if it, he came up with it. It's just I noticed it there. So let's say Batman, or in this case, the standard, um, their costumes are pretty much the same. So he's going to have a mask that kind of goes like this. It's, like, literally your standard <laughs> superhero outfit. Now, that line looks cool. But what these guys would do is they would kind of, they would, they would leave it like that, and then they would kind of, like, draw this, like, outline like that. I don't know why, but it makes it look like it's got a little bit of a fold or a little bit of a texture to the outside of it. Awesome. Uh, if you're working digital, there's a real simple way to do that. And then I'll show you how we just make it look a little bit more organic, I guess. Uh, so grab your marker tool. You're going to have to make a new layer. Or if you're using Photoshop, just use like a, uh, in that case, probably use five or six pixel brush. No pressure sensitivity, at least for now. Um, try to get like a... Th what you're looking at when you're drawing this line is... Um, the outside of it. How thick is the outside? Because what we're going to do is fill the white inside with white, okay? So you got to determine how, how thick you want it from the width. So that's a little bit too big. Still too big. Well, still too big. That's better. Okay, so. Uh, so we're going to start with the bridge of the nose, come down the nose. Roll over the face and come down. I'll go past the actual uh, head. Again, try to follow the curve of the face and stuff. Let me just flip it, see how it's looking. Okay. So now you have that. In, in uh, Photoshop, I think it's Control click on the layer. In Manga Studio, it's Alt-click the picture inside. And what it'll do is it'll select everything in the layer. So that's one thing we have. What we're going to do here is click Reduce Selection. I usually go 0 0.2. I'm working at a 600 DPI image in Manga Studio. You just got to tinker with it. Um, I don't want to give you specific stuff that I'm using. Uh, I will tell you, but you just play around with it because everybody's style is going to be a little bit different. So as you can see, two got real small. One trick you got to remember when you're working in, uh, or not one trick, but one thing you definitely have to be concerned about when you're working in Manga Studio or anything digital. This looks like it's still a big image, right? But when we zoom out, like, this is tiny compared to the entire image, so you can get stuck doing a lot of stuff. So to me, that's still too small, so I'm going to undo that. I'm going to reduce it and literally go to 0 0.1. Now it's going to be like a hairline. Um, actually, I'm going to try something. Let's go, let's add a little 0 0.05 action to that. There we go. Just give a little outline. Anyway, so we got all that. Now you could delete it or fill it with white. Um, I'm going to fill it with white, at least at this point. You can do whatever you like there. So just like that. Now that we have that, I'm just going to lower the opacity a little bit so I can see where it's rolling over the face. And I'm just going to erase all this extra stuff. Just like this. Uh, grab a regular Maru brush again. Go back to the bla black ink. And just kind of draw a little puff, I guess you want to call it, at the end of it. Uh, so when we crack it back up, there you go. Or crack it back up, crank it back up. Man, I'm all over the place today with you guys. Uh, so let's just zoom out here so you can see it. So there you go. So it's like a quick effect that you can do that kind of stuff, right? And uh, lately I've been adding this kind of element to the character as well, like where it's got this kind of stuff. 
So you might be into that kind of thing if you if you wanted to try that out, give it a shot. Uh, so again, he's really old, so we get to add all these really cool wrinkles to his face. It makes these really cool shadows as well. Um, there like that. And I'm gonna bring his mask up a little bit. Just to help show him, a, give him a little bit more emotion. And I'm gonna cheat this real quick, see if it works. I'm just gonna highlight that and then uh, copy paste. We're gonna transform it, we're gonna flip it horizontal. And just rotate it. I'm trying to mimic what we got going over there. And uh, actually now that I'm looking at this, this one is way too close to his the bridge of his nose. So let's just move it over. There we go. So just merge that down. Zoom out just so we can get another look at it. Flip it. Looks good. Cool. And uh, awesome. Looks like we keep getting more people in here. This is fantastic. Uh, again, because I, I know people are popping in. I don't mean to keep repeating myself, but... Uh, if you'd like to ask a question, all you got to do is make an account. Um, it's pretty quick and easy. And uh, just feel free to throw it in there. Please ask it in caps. That way I know that it's a question. And um, so I'm going to be trying as well. Is every Monday to Friday we're going to be doing this. Uh, 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. Eastern Time. So whatever time you're in the room right now and you're looking at this, just subtract about a half hour from there. And that's when we're going to be streaming, okay? All right, we'll get some eyebrows on this cat. Some more wrinkles on here. I'm just trying to figure out. Um, eyes are a big deal. A lot of people look at the eyes. Uh, remember, too, one of the tricks that you can get away with is let me just crack the, crank the opacity up again. You're trying to give direction for the viewer to look, right? So in this panel here, it's a white background from the light from outside, and that door is going to be pretty white with his cast shadow on it. He's casting, light is coming in from the background. So all this is going to be black except for this stuff. So your eye is going to go this way. So a trick we can do is with his eyes, you can either have them looking down to make the person look down. doesn't make too much sense there. But what we're going to do is just kind of make them look right just to help enforce, um, reinforce, I should say, some more direction uh, and cues, I guess you could call them, to uh, help your readers. I want to make his eyes pretty small. It's funny, this character, uh, he's kind of like Superman, <laughs> except um, kind of a scaredy cat in a lot of ways. Okay, so I know he's going to be in quite a bit of shadow, but... So we get there. I'll try to speed this up here so we can get to the rest of them. This all going. All right, I don't want to give him too sharp a peck. He's an older guy. I shouldn't even be giving him pecks at all, to be honest. Okay. Uh, one thing I do like to draw with my characters, usually, like in this case, uh, I'll worry about doing all the anatomy first. I'm aware of where his costume is, like what pieces will be overlapping and stuff. Uh, like he's got this these giant shoulder blades that pop out like that or shoulder pads but um, I like to still throw the anatomy in first even though I'm going to have to erase a good portion of it just gives me like landmarks you know um, whatever makes it a little bit easier you know for yourself I'm gonna put some dents in his ribs there we'll get to that hand in a second Some more dents in the ribs. Um, I'll show you guys another cool trick here as well. In case you don't know. Um, let's just go down to... Okay, I'm going to go down my sketch layer. Okay, so if you've got your ribs, remember everything's in perspective. Everything's in perspective. Uh, so if his chest is here, he's obviously leaning forward. He's got a lot of muscle up at the top there. So I'm just going to put in you know, the perspective lines that would be on his rib cage like that. Or on his whole torso. So if you can see these lines, they're still wrapping around his ribs. Now what you would do is you'd find his nipples, uh, which would be 
I believe it's been a little while since I've done the measurement. Now I just usually eyeball it, but like halfway through your collarbone, and just you know put them in perspective. So let's assume his nipples are around there. Um, you can kind of follow that shape, that roundness down the ribs, and that's where you can toss in that really you know those really cool muscles that stick out. Um, so now that I have that information, I'm not going to make this guy totally rip down here, but I'll just throw a couple in there. And uh, let me just turn that off so you can see it. And that's how you'd find the placement for that kind of stuff. Hey, John, yeah. <laughs> Throwing some saggy man boobs. I already did uh, saggy man boobs on that other page. Uh, it's not an issue unless we got saggy man boobs, right? Uh, let's get a little collarbone action. All right, let's get some thumbs. And if you can, I know people don't like drawing hands. I hate drawing hands. Uh, but uh, hands and eye, or hands and faces are basically your secret weapons to showing as much uh, diverse body language and animation that you can kind of get, especially when you're working in comics or pinups or anything. Uh, when you're very, you don't have a lot of flexibility to show animation, right? So, um, wind, anything like that helps. But in static things, kind of like a hand or a, fate, or a picture like this. Whatever you can get away with, try to toss it in. At least in my experiences, I found it to be pretty, uh, pretty rewarding if you can sneak in something that helps you get a little extra emotion. And I don't think you'll you'll nail it all the time. I I don't know. I feel personally like I don't ever really get it. Sometimes it's like I'll be like, yeah, you know, I, I got that one. That one looks good. But most of the time. And that just might be myself beating myself up over it. But uh, it just doesn't feel right sometimes. But uh, at least try to put the effort in there. And, uh, you know, if you hate drawing hands like I do, the more you draw, eventually you got to get better, right? <laughs> Hopefully. All right, so we got him there. Uh, I'm going to make another layer. Got a billion layers going on. And this is where we're going to put his costume. Uh, he's got like this chest thing. So I usually like to do that one. I'm just going to go down to my rough layer here. Uh, I'm going to make another layer. So we got a billion layers going on. Turn all that stuff behind him off. Don't really need it. Uh, I'm going to turn it blue. Going to turn it blue. Uh, let's see if we got our pencil tool. That's kind of. I'm just going to kind of sketch in the rest of his costume here. He's got his little like his little clips. Keep his cape in place. And remember, he's got his little shoulder pads here. Okay, so remember, you always got to remember, always, always be weary and um, attentive to perspective. So obviously, we got a hand coming up here. I've even got the lines rendered there, so. We've got all this perspective happening. If I did this with the arm, that looks weird as hell. The arm's really going back in space like this, okay? So as you can see, it's coming at us. So if I were to go like this with the shoulder uh, pad thing, that looks weird. You can literally just follow these shapes and get get it in there. Um, it just takes practice with this kind of stuff, you know? You'll get there. It's 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 not that hard uh, if you keep practicing. And I still don't nail it really ever. I always feel like I like kind of screw this stuff up. Oops. All right, so we got that one. Uh, I'm just going to transform that sucker. Get him over here. I'll make it a little bigger. There you go. Okay, cool.
And just wanted to say uh, one more time. I'll say one more time, and I know I'll keep saying it. <laughs> but uh, if anybody in the chat room, if you had a question or anything that you like answered, I uh, feel more than free to just uh, ask in the chat. Just uh, I would ask that you put it in capitals if you wouldn't mind. Just so I know it's a question. Let me check something out here. Okay, cool. Oops. Yeah, we'll go like that with it. All right, cool. All right, so we got that. Um, then we're going to get into the background work in a second here. I'll show you what's really cool with Mega Studio again, uh, with how they got like those um, perspective rulers. Okay. Let's grab a big fat marker here. Right, let's just zoom out here to see him. All right, cool. So we got our guy there. Um, now we got to just clean up his anatomy part there just so that, uh, you know, you don't see his pecs through his cape. That'd be really weird. Erase that there. So all that. So yeah, it's probably a little extra work throwing that that stuff in there, but it's just quick lines, you know, and it still lets me see what's going on. Um, and at least it gives me the ability to choose what I want to keep and what I want to get rid of, right? Uh, so in this case here, I won't show his uh, his far shoulder blade or shoulder muscle, I should say, uh, but it does still show up underneath there. This one here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to erase parts of it. You know, with rendering and stuff, once we get to the inking, that'll that'll help that big time. And get rid of this. Don't need that. And there you go. So he's pretty much done there. So if I turn off uh, the rough stuff, there you go. That's a that's a clean line right there. And uh, what we're going to do here is the background. So guess what? We're making another layer. <laughs> uh, actually, let me just merge all this stuff together because we don't need all this stuff. So Control E, Control E. So now he's all on one layer. I'll make another layer. I'm going to call it BG for background. Just move that underneath them. And don't need this one, so we can delete that. Yep. And don't need you. Delete that. Yes. Okay, we need a rough layer here. So crank the opacity a bit. Okay, when I do background stuff, the initial lines that I like to work with are just like the, the regular marker tool. I don't like to get um, too much line variation just yet. I'll save that for when we're doing the shadows and the rendering. Uh, so let's just see. Uh, no, I think it's 0 0.3 I use. Yeah. And up at the top here, snap to perspective ruler. We're going to turn that on. Make sure that uh, this, uh, the right perspective tool is on there. So uh, panel two, it's there. And I've already, in my thumbnail, I already have the background done, right? So uh, I know the, the, the big thing, the most important part of this is where he is in relation to the door and stuff. So I'm just going to draw that straight line that I had for the door. It's not going to line up perfectly because this was all sketched, the thumbnail, right? Once you start bringing in Mega Studio and stuff like that, lines can be straight. When I work in thumbnails, I rarely have anything other than a piece of paper and a pencil, maybe an eraser. I don't like to do the... The ruler action I save all that stuff for later but if you're into that kind of stuff by all means do it um, it'll just take you a little bit more time to set it up um, once you bring it digital so that you can uh, get all the lines that you need and there's nothing wrong with it that's for sure um, okay so what I'm gonna do here is uh, okay so let's get the door going Back 
active there, cool. Like, and this is a really cool thing about these rulers. Like, look how fast you can start doing this stuff. Um, you know, there is some some bad, I don't want to say bad, but, like, this can take some time to get used to, but uh, I don't know. The payoff's pretty cool. Just being able to draw like this, you know, freehand, it's pretty awesome. Um, all right, so we're going to need something creative for the door. Uh, actually, I do have reference going. Just let me open that up in the background here. Uh, da -da -da. For some reason, I didn't. I got a hallway, but I didn't get the actual doors. Uh, let me just see this here. How about this one? No. <laughs> reference, reference, reference. Where are we going? Uh, no, I don't want that one. Hmm. All right, let me just try something else here. Apartment hallway, maybe you could find me something. Oh, we're gonna have to take bits and pieces from it. Okay, so these doors are pretty simple. It's funny, um, unless you live in an apartment, <laughs> don't really remember what apartment doors look like. How sad is that? And then when I see them, it's like, really? It's just like a plain, ugh, plain, plain, plain old Jane doors, man. Um, okay, well, one thing I definitely have to know or remember is there's always peepholes, so we'll get to that in a second. Uh, and they're pretty thick frames, so... Get that frame going here. I'm gonna add some extra lines here just to give it a little bit more detail. And now we can kind of work on the actual thickness of the door. Again, I'm just gonna like litter this thing with these little lines. Just makes it look like it's a little bit more detailed going on than there really is. Uh, and then everything else is going to be black. I'm not going to have to worry about that stuff too much. Uh, what I will do while I'm here, usually I would save this for inking, but uh, you know we're almost to the end of the stream here, so I'll just show you guys. Um, I would leave it like this, and then I'd make a new layer uh, for contours. And what a contour is is like a thick black outline. Um, so again, with this this marker, I've got, what is it, 0 0.3. I'll probably jack this up to like a 6 or a 7. And then just redraw over those lines just to make this pop and over there's gonna be black so it's not gonna matter but this side we can still hit um, that way it just pops a little bit more uh, so if I turn the rough off so you can see it there uh, okay so we're gonna turn this one and let's just erase the standard because he is in the way cool um, so it's pretty much done and uh, according to my roughs, apparently all that's in black in the background, right? So uh, I'll do this with you guys as well. I'll have one of these um, uh, folders for each panel, but then I'll make another one uh, just for my inks, just to keep it clear for myself. Sometimes I would put the inking layer inside each panel in case I wanted to get a little little crazy, but uh, lately, I don't know, I've just been getting, getting sloppier and sloppier. Uh, so we're just going to fill that black, fill that black. And you can see right away, it's already coming coming together. Um, actually, just give me one second because I know there's a number on that door. Ow. I just got to look at the script here. Just one second. <laughs> hey Zelda, you sleeping? Yeah? Uh, page 20 something something. Four, I think it is. Uh, no. Okay, so it's not page twenty-four. Uh. Okay, there we go. Medium shot. Oh, I 
could have swore there's a number on there. I guess not. Same thing in the hallway door. Slightly ajar. <laughs> I don't know, sometimes there's little details in the script. You gotta double check over top of it, eh? <laughs> yeah, I know. As soon as I got up, Zelda was just meowing. She's like, and you can, you know, when cats or I guess dogs too, and they get like that half sleep, it's like half of their eyes open and just like, like giving you so much sass. Uh, what's that? Feel free to add a number. Okay. Um, what's your favorite number? <laughs> Put some favorite number. Does that? Do you have a favorite? Do people actually have favorite numbers? Actually, well, like, let's see how big this apartment is. What if it's, like, room 237? Well, you got a 7 in there, so we'll meet halfway. All right, now this will actually be kind of fun, because I haven't really messed around with this too much, but we're going to grab the text tool. Let's see how fun this gets. Uh, so it's room 237. That actually looks standard. Mm -hmm. The font looks legit. Uh, I want to see something actually. Outline. Oh, yeah. That's cool. You can do an outline already on there. I think we're going to keep it on there. Let's see what. I wonder if you could do the thickness of it. Character spacing, line spacing. Alright, that's too big though, so we're just going to shrink it up. Okay. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Font, we got the font, what is this? Show hide character, okay, no. Show hide dial or dialogue balloons. Okay, we're not doing any of that. Okay, so, okay, cool, you stay there. Now, if I, if, if we can do this, maybe I can just select those points. Not just the size of it. Okay, so, I wanna transform it. I don't know if I can, um, okay, maybe I have to rasterize it. Rasterize layer. Do you want to keep the original? Nah. All right, so transform. Nope, I lied to you. Edit. Move a transform, what a perspective, that's what I want. Okay, now what we're trying to do, this is really finicky in Manga Studio. I don't know why, maybe we'll get lucky, but I'm trying to get the, see how it locks in here, and I don't know if it's something I can fix. I haven't really messed around with this stuff too much in here. I usually, literally, I would just open up Photoshop, do this, and then paste it in. Uh, processing type, perspective. But anyway, uh, so just get her going here. And I'm trying to line it up with this top line that I have. And remember, you got your vanishing point there. I don't know if you can lock this stuff. Yeah, you see how it's getting really weird. I can't. Can I can Alt click maybe or Control click? All right, screw this. We're gonna do this uh, old school. All right, so delete you. Okay, we're gonna save. Uh, we're gonna open up Photoshop in the background, and I'll show you guys how we do that. Da -da 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 -da. Ah, the sun's coming up. Nice. Two in the nose, the shining reference. Ah man. I actually watched The Shining a couple days ago. God, I love that movie. Such a good movie. Alright, so this is what I'll do when I'm using Photoshop with this stuff. Uh let me just bring Photoshop over here so you guys can see it. Alright, so we got that. Let's open up Manga Studio. Usually I would just <laughs> print screen, get real lazy with it, but uh, it is a higher image, so that's why it's getting a little little dirty here. Uh, so what we'll do is file export. You know, no, screw it. Let's just, let's just, let's just stay dirty, shall we? Uh, so let's hit print screen and let's get photoshops new if this was like a really important thing uh, and by that I mean if this was a really important <clears throat> excuse me uh, like let's say it's a big scene or something I would export it as a 600 dpi image that way all the line art and stuff like that stays 
good to go. But there we go. So we paste it in there. I'll make another layer. I don't know why I made another because I'm going to just put a text layer. But uh, clicky, clicky. What was the room again? Sorry. Uh, 237. All right. And we're going to make it black. Huge. Uh, what was it? Times New Roman. Sounds pretty stupid. How's that look? Yeah, it's it's fine. All right, so hit enter. It's good to go. I don't think I can transform it yet. I appreciate the rasterize it. It's been a little while. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we're gonna right click rasterize, and then now what we'll do is edit transform. Basically what we were trying to do before, distort, I'm going to bring it up towards the top here, zoom in so we can see it. Now what I'm trying to do is, if you hold shift, the lines will stay straight. So I'm going to bring it up here, Whoa. just so you can try to match that perspective line there. And you have to do the same for the top that you would on the bottom. Uh, but those lines aren't up and down like that, they're a little crooked. So let's just zoom out a little bit. Holding shift helps big time when you're doing this stuff here. Cool. Looks good. Looks good. Actually, it's a little big. Or actually, you know what? Screw this. It's not big. It's uh, too high on the door. What are we talking about? Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just quickly make some more perspective lines. Just gonna grab a brush. Uh, it doesn't really matter what we're, what it is right now. Let's grab a red. And we already know where our vanishing point is, so we're just going to start. Oh, jeez, that's huge. I swear I've done this before, you guys. <laughs> click there. Cool. Click. It's not gonna be an exact science right now. It doesn't really matter. Um, we'll fit it in one of those areas there. Probably that's top one. Okay, so let's get it. Let's do it again here. Edit, transform, distort. less cheesy I don't know I'll, we'll f dress that up whatever okay what I'm gonna do in here is I'm gonna control select that layer select modify contract by two and we'll delete that just so we can get some white on there like that um, and what I'll do is uh, actually you know what screw that I apologize guys I'm like all over the place right now with you guys okay we're gonna load the selection we're going to select, modify, expand actually by two. Make a new layer. Put this layer underneath the original layer. We're going to fill that with black. And then the original layer will lock and we'll fill that with white. There we go. I can still go in there and clean up that line art because that looks pretty garish right now. Uh, but anyway, so we have that. And what I would do again is now I would um, grab my marquee tool. Select like a good chunk and go edit. Oops, my guides for live stream are there. Okay, edit. Copy merged. What copy merge does is it copies every single layer that's within that selection. Okay, really powerful tool there. Uh, so now, now I have it in there. Um, I'm going to go edit paste. Now this is where it's going to get interesting. Paste as transparent. Let's see how small it is. Yeah, it's pretty small. So what I'll do is I'll transform. And the reason it's smaller than it should be is because I just did a print screen. I didn't export it like I should have. And you're trying to line it up. You know, this has got to be perfect. It should be perfect, but it's all right. Close enough. All right, so I have it. Um, what I will do here is I'll just lower the opacity. I only need that one area, so I'll just select the numbers. 
And then what's cool about Manga Studio, they already give you the stuff right there. It's clear outside selection, so it's going to delete all that stuff that we don't need. Um, and then if I just crank it up. So that was a lot of work just to get a number in there, but sometimes you got to, you know, play around and stuff like that. Um, okay, so it looks like we're done, but do have one question here, so I'll answer that before we go. Uh, Rempa's asking, hey, John, what's your bleed area set at? Also, what is your basic frame set at? Okay, so if I go to File, New Page... I'll show you guys all the settings and stuff right here. Uh, the standard, I think that's what I'm using right now. Yeah, 600 DPI. I think I can double click it to go into the real sweet stuff. Okay, so do you have Mega Studio open right now if you want? Because then I could just read this stuff too and you can punch it in. Or um, actually, are you following me on Facebook at all? Okay, well, what I'll do is for the people in the chat, just in case, if you're following me on Facebook, uh, Cool. If not, I'll post it on Twitter as well, wherever you guys are following me, and I'll post it on my fan page, because I know a lot of people ask this stuff, because I know I was looking for this kind of stuff too, until I found it from someone, uh, just for the settings for Manga Studio here, but uh, if you've got Manga Studio open right now, I can just read it to you, so name it whatever you want, um, your basic cuddle, color model is monochrome, standard resolution, I have it at 600 dpi, just for like better line quality I find, uh, units is, units is? <laughs> units are inches, and your width is going to be 11.0000 and your height is going to be 16.500 and then on your inside dimensions for the finished frame the width is 9.993 and your height is 15.247 I don't know exactly if that's 100% like how it should be, uh, but I did try to mirror it up to some older pages and it, and it held up, so I've uh, just been keeping it at that. And then your basic frame, uh, the width is 9.00, and your height is 14.247, and the offset for the X and the Y are 0, and the bleed width is 0.3. Zero, zero. And I know a lot of people, they'll do, I think it's 10 by 15 is their basic frame. So I could probably even open the width a little bit more. Um, yeah, Inkbot saying he uses Kablam from their crop guide, but my bleed area is so huge so I can use it to sketch more freely. Yeah, totally. Uh, so we had that. Um, I'll get another screenshot of that for you guys. Now, uh, the other question you asked, uh, let's see, let's go. So what we're going to do is you wanted to know, all right, so we're gonna make a new layer for panel ruler. Okay, and let's cut it up, cool. Okay, <clears throat> so I use a panel, panel ruler cutter tool options. And uh, what mine are there, if you got like a piece of paper or something, you might wanna Write that down. Uh, the horizontal and the vertical are both 4.50 millimeters. And then I have the check mark on for panel border width is 1.75. See you later, John. So anyway, thank you guys so much for stopping by. Hope you guys had a little bit of fun. Uh, I honestly didn't expect to get this much, many people in the room. It's so early where I'm at, but uh, awesome. And for all of you in there that are just watching, and you don't have an account or anything, that's cool. If you did have a question for uh, tomorrow or whenever, just make a, feel free to make a free account and just pop in the chat and just throw a question out there. And uh, like I said, so I'm going to be trying to do this every um, Monday to Friday, 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, or whatever time you're at right now, just subtract an hour, okay? And uh, I will be uploading these videos, so hopefully uh, if you can't make it to this early, bright and early stream, you guys can still watch it on YouTube. And this Thursday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. should still happen. Uh, but I'll, I'll let you guys know. It might happen a little earlier because my bedtime's 9 o'clock now. So, old man hours, eh? But anyway, thank you guys so much. I'm going to get back to making some comics before work. I hope you guys have an awesome day. Hope you guys have a productive day. Keep reading comics. Keep making comics. I'll talk to you tomorrow. And uh, take care.